All right, hey guys, what's going on? Slide Home Theater Dude, got a brand new episode for you today. Today's video is all about speaker levels, speakers distances. How do you set them up if you don't have necessarily have an auto calibration? Now, I'm using the RMC1 from Emotiva, and it's uh, advertised as come, to come with the actual Dirac Live. That feature isn't available just yet. They're still ironing out all the kinks with it, but I'm sure that whenever it comes out, it's gonna be far superior to the other things that are technically on the market right now. So, I mean, typically in an auto calibration, like it's very simple, especially with like a Denon and Marantz, you just plug in your little um, uh, calibration mic, and then you're, you're just off the races. It basically just walks you through the entire thing. Now, if you guys don't necessarily know how to manually set your speaker distances and your speaker levels, it's gonna be very simple and I can explain everything very, very simply right off the intro. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and jump into this. Use the measure function on your iPhone, and then you just initialize it. You move your actual iPhone around, and then what you do is you set it to where you want it to be, like this is gonna be your main listening position right here, and then you press the plus sign, and then that will set your start point, and then you press the plus sign again whenever you get to wherever you're going. Pro tip, this doesn't like reflective surfaces, so what I would do is I would pick something that's non-reflective, so what I did is I just used the face of the actual speaker. Since this is coordinate based, it doesn't matter if it's a top or a bottom. And then it'll tell you what your measurement is. Now I went ahead and measured this with a tape measure. I'll show you guys that later. And it was within a half an inch each time. So it's, it's, it's very accurate. But if it ever gets off on its coordinates, you can readjust it right there. And then also it's very smart to where it would actually snap to the original spot that you chose and it'll allow you to continue. So just keep doing that for all the rest of your speakers. I went ahead and did it <laughs> to where it was every single speaker going at the same time. There was like lines all over the room. It was like super spaghetti. Uh, I would recommend probably just doing one at a time. And then if it ever gets out of its an initial spot, all you do is just click it and drag it back to where it needs to go. And then just double check the actual lengths. So if you're not absolutely perfect, you can either change your main listening position or you can actually change your speaker distances. Here's what I was talking about, this <laughs> super spaghetti, man. Uh, it's just ridiculous. And then another way to do this is gonna be the two person method. You can also grab your tape measure, have the per first person in the main listening position, and then you just drag your tape out to where you're actually gonna be at. Uh, this is you know, the most old school way to do it, and it's very effective. And in comparison to the electronic method, this is within half to one inch of your electronic method. So I mean, they're very close together, especially within the parameters that you're working with. All right guys, well I just showed you how to do these speaker distances, and that's actually very important. I didn't necessarily touch on this in the first place, but speaker distances are important because typically out of the box, these things are set to zero on all your speakers. And think about whenever, if all your speakers are playing at the exact same time, right? If they all play the same note at the same time, they're going to reach your ear at different times or at a phase, really. So, you you know, the one that's very close to you, it's going to reach your ears quicker. The one that's further away, it's going to reach your ears uh, longer. And it's just not going to sound right. Something's going to sound off. Some people it might give them a headache. Some people might make them nauseous. Some people they may not even notice at all. But to do this, to, to do things properly, you need to set speaker distances. That's important. That's called the speaker latency. That basically is a, um, in the processor. It, it shifts its signal to meet your ears all at the same time with all your speakers if they are playing all at the same time. So it's 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 just spatially to help you out in, in that way. And I just wanted to go ahead and explain that. So now we talked about speaker distances, let's talk about speaker levels. So there's two parts of the equation. If you don't have an auto calibration, this is the old school way to do it. Um, it's very simple and uh, it, it just takes a little time and plus it takes a little messing with. So right here we have a decibel meter. This one's kind of pricey, I got this one on Amazon. And um, you know, this one is about 50 bucks I think, but it does A weighted and C weighted, which is important because A weighted, you're gonna use that for your speakers. C weighted, if you're gonna be using this for subwoofers, then you would be using C-weighted. They're completely different, and it actually makes a difference. So um, some people use cell phones, and you know that, that that's that's all good and well. But if you want to be more accurate, then I would recommend grabbing one of these. That way, you you have the peace of mind that you're doing it right. You don't have to keep doing it over and over and over again. You put this in your main listening position, and you have it facing up. Then you go to your speaker levels on your AVR, and then you just start adjusting them. Since I just did an update, I didn't save anything, so it basically it's it's hard to. <laughs> I should have done a backup, to be honest. I just uploaded a fresh update, 
and you know it, it didn't save anything so there is an option to save I didn't do that but I mean just phone headed to me I got to redo this but just to show you guys you just go into here into your actual speaker level it's going to play a noise and then you just adjust it accordingly since this is on mute you guys can't hear it because I didn't want the movie in the background to be playing and then that's it All right, guys, well, I just finished up the speaker levels, the speaker distances, the speaker sizes, the speaker crossovers. I mean, all that stuff's important. Let's go ahead and show you guys what I did. So if you go into your speaker levels, you can actually see all of them are already done. So now with this, every single time with the RMC1, this this may be uh, updated a little later, which I, th I think that they should. Um, if, if you're going to be doing these speaker levels, it gives you an option of doing low, high, or medium. So what I would do is I would set this thing to medium because you know it's it's a, it's a it's a good middle ground and if you set them too high it's going to raise the actual volume of the white noise so that way you're going to be lowering your levels so they're not going to be as powerful and then on the op opposite side of that if you put it to you know low it'll maybe run your 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 levels way too hot so i mean just goldilocks right down the middle i would recommend going with medium but like i was saying if you ever back out of this if you're you know going through and doing your levels adjusting them up and down and then you go back and then you're doing this one too, but for some reason you back out of this menu completely, pay attention to that medium right there. So we're just gonna go back into the speaker levels. And all your speaker levels are still saved to where they were, but this has changed to low. So like I was talking about, if you have it set on low, that means it's gonna be a very like, a, a lot lower volume that you're gonna be setting this standard to. So that means that if you have it if, if you go back in and go back out, you know, you're, you're cycling through all these, half of your speakers could be at the wrong levels. Um, so I would just recommend just verifying that this thing is set to medium. And then I would just, just cycle through with your decibel meter and make sure that everything is set to 75 dB. So there's a couple different ways of doing this. If you guys don't have an RMC1, if you guys just are doing this for your just general um, AVR type of experience, what I would do is that um, some of these, they're, they're done a little different. So that means that sometimes you have to go in here, instead of having this test tone low, it'll pick it for you. Sometimes what you do is whenever you go into your levels, it'll just spit out the volume that it was already at in the first place. So I always recommend that whenever you're doing this, make sure that you go and turn the knob on the volume and the volume is independent of this level. So go ahead and turn the, the volume and make sure it's at reference. Reference is 0.0, .0 dB on your actual readout. So if you have a Marantz Denon, different things like that. Um, if, if you guys aren't using that scale, I would recommend using it. Uh, some people use the one through 100 and I, that doesn't do anything for me. So I, I like to use the, the reference scale. And then you go through and then you adjust your levels based off of that reference volume. And then you're shooting for a target of 75 dB class A weighted. Another cool thing that I'm gonna jump into later on is that this one also has a multi-band EQ for each individual speaker. So like I was saying, this thing has 16 channels and basically what that boils down to is it gives you kind of like a mini DSP so that you're able to go in there and control these parameters. Let's go ahead and just show you real quick. This is very similar to what I've, I'm used to on my SVS subs, whenever I wanna go in there and you know uh, try to make it as linear as possible and, and, and the sound recreation. You also have your cue here, your width. It basically to custom tailors it for you. All right, so another thing I wanted to talk about is that this Emotiva RMC1 is fully customizable and integratable with the Rumi Q Wizard app. 
So you can, you know, save your different settings, you can upload different settings. And I also thought that was actually really cool too. So it's not just limited to subwoofers anymore. Uh, you can actually do this for, your, for each and entire speaker that you guys have. So that's it guys, I just wanna go ahead and make this video to explain how to, you know, manually set your um, calibration, either it be your distances or your, your speaker levels. So here's my experience with Denon and Marantz. Like the auto calibration, Odyssey will get you in the ballpark, but sometimes different things will be wrong. So the speaker distances might be wrong, the levels might be wrong, the sizes and crossovers. You know, almost every single time that I've done it, it hasn't turned out perfect. So it, it would, you know, make sense. Why not go through the effort to, you know, bust out the decibel meter and also the tape measure to make sure that everything is proper so that you don't have to necessarily keep doing this over and over again and that you guys can, you know, actually enjoy your system. I mean, like th this, th this is what it's all about. You, you want to have, you know, this amazing home theater system. And, you know, if, if you're not going to go through all the extra effort, if you just take it out of the box, plug it in, I mean, you're, you're, you're kind of selling yourself short. So I will say this, the RMC1 does not have its Dirac Live available just as of yet. They give you the microphone and they give you the patch cable in anticipation of the actual release. But as of right now, it is not available. So I just wanted to show you guys how to do a manual calibration on your setup. And um, this can work if, if you have a Sony, a Denon, a Marantz, Yamaha, whatever it is. Um, but I mean, it, it, it's, it's just one thing that I, that I wanted to let you guys know. And as always, guys, links to any of this stuff is going to be in the description. I'm an Eva Tiva SBS and Amazon affiliate. So if you guys want to link to any of this stuff, don't hesitate to hit me up down in the comments. Really appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure you like, favorite, share, and subscribe. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the little subscribe notifications bell. It really helps out get these videos as soon as they come out. Really appreciate you guys for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.